Hello, listener. My name is Reverend Ken Kimiwe, the senior pastor at Sitam Gong, and I'm here just to share with us the message of Easter. Easter is a very, very, very prominent part of our calendar, and many times some of us find ourselves traveling, going up country to be with our family and friends. Maybe some of us take holiday, and there are a lot of activities that happen around this season. But again, as we think about Easter, the message that comes to us in Easter is about the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are told from Scripture that Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice for us who are sinners, and the blood that he shed on the cross was for us who are sinners to be redeemed and to become children of God. Today I want to share with us from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and we are going to read from verse 12 to 28 and then look at some things that we can draw from this scripture regarding the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. Same to your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, and we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not also raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. And if only for this life they have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But if Christ indeed has been raised from the dead and with those who have fallen asleep, for since death came through one man and the resurrection of the dead comes also through one man, for as one Adam all die, so in Christ all will live again. For each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. I want us to just share some brief admonition from this passage of scripture. It talks about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it brings out some truths that we can identify with. And it begins by saying, if Jesus Christ had never been raised from the dead, in other words, if Jesus remained in the grave and he never resurrected, Number one, it says that our faith is futile. We are to be pitied of all the people. Because the point at which Jesus dies and he resurrects, it is where there is a turning point in the whole of history as concerning the whole aspect of sacrifice. That he died and that he was able to be raised again. And then secondly, the other thing that he says which is also very pertinent to us today, is that if Jesus had never resurrected, then what we are preaching is useless. In fact, I should not even be preaching to you now. But because we know that Jesus died and he resurrected, then whatever we are preaching is not false. You know, some people said he never resurrected. They said all kinds of things about his resurrection. But for those of us who believe, we know that Christ is alive. He's not in the grave anymore. He has risen and he is with us. The third thing that we find here, it also says that if the dead who die in Christ would have not come from the point of understanding that Jesus died and was able to be raised into the newness of life, then those of us who die in the Lord will die without any hope. It will be useless. But thanks be to God, when Christ raised from the dead, 
we also who die in him shall also be raised into the newness of life. In other words, Christ becomes the first fruit of those who die and are raised into the newness of life. The other thing that we see here, which is also very pertinent and which we want to also look at, is the fact that when Jesus died and he was able to rise up again, he was able to complete and he was able to bring together the Old Testament and the New Testament into one person. In the Old Testament, it was the animals that were sacrificed. And out of the sacrifice of these animals, people would be forgiven of their sins because of the blood that would be shed by the animal. But we see that Jesus, in dying and being resurrected into the newness of life, he not only became the sacrifice for our sins instead of animals, but he became the point at which God connects us from the Old Testament into the New Testament. Christ is alive and he is here to be your savior. He wants to bring life into you. He wants to give you hope that is beyond this life. He wants to give you new understanding and new revelation. And I pray that during this time of Easter, that you will not just be taken up by the festivities and all the other things that go around Easter, but you will focus on the truth of why it had to require Jesus to die and for him to rise again. And I want to suggest to us, like the Bible says here, thanks be to God that when Jesus died and he resurrected, we also in him have that hope of eternal life. Shall we pray together? Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, even because of this time of Easter. It is a time of commemorating, it is a time of reflecting on what you came to do for us on the cross. And indeed, as it was prophesied by the word of God, that a time will come when you will become that lamp of God that was crucified, that was sacrificed, so that we who are sinners can be brought into the newness of life and can be reconciled back with our God. And today we want to thank you that you died and that you rose again. And I want to pray, oh Father, if there is any among us, those who are listening to us today, who feel like they are dead, may they believe in you so that you can resurrect them. Lord, if there are those, oh God, who have got dead situations in their lives, may they receive, may they tap into this resurrection power so that they can be able to be raised back into life, into good health, into financial well-being. Lord, those who are trusting you for breakthroughs in their lives, may they look to you even during this time of Easter and tap into that resurrection power. And so, Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity to worship you and to glorify you during this season. And we have asked all these things with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And listener, viewer, we just want to encourage you, look to God. And those who look to him shall never be put to shame.